Many people know that the two great mottos of Judo are Se Ryoku Zenyo and Chita Kyoe. These are philosophical principles, but they're also guiding principles to the techniques. The, the principle which really governs the techniques is Se Ryoku Zenyo. Uh, Se means uh, life force and uh, or life life part and ryoku is uh, force or strength so say ryoku is your life force it's the it's the it's the basic life force the basic energy of your life it's your vitality uh, that you can bring forth to apply to any any effort uh, zenyo means best use so it's to use your life force use your energies to the best way the most efficiently and so this efficiency is the governing principle for the techniques Kano sought to find techniques that were very efficient in operation. We're going to discover how we get from that notion uh, through some basic concepts and principles all the way to the techniques. We have to apply the techniques correctly for them to follow the principle of maximum efficiency. The first thing we're going to do is to examine how power is generated uh, in an efficient way. So this is about power generation and Seiryo Kuzenyo. Uh, Kano realized that one of the important things to generating power was to understand what kind of powers exist that the body can generate. There are two basic kinds that we talk about in Judo. One is Ikioi and one is Hazumi. Ikioi uh, reflects more of standing in a braced position and, and pushing your opponent maybe with your arms. You're not moving, but you're using your, your arms and legs, whatever, to push your opponent. This is a direct impetus. Uh, Hazumi has to do more with momentum. It has to do with movement. And Kano realized that there's much more power in movement than there is in the static application of mus muscular force. And so he bases his judo logically to allow for movement, to maximize movement. And so the first great principle is the Shizentai no Ri. This is the principle of natural posture. We stand upright with our feet about shoulder width apart and our back straight, well balanced, and very flexible, able to move quickly. We come to grips, we're upright, and we move around, and I try to generate momentum in my opponent so that I can throw him more easily. This is a critical aspect of judo, it's overlooked by beginners. Beginners tend to want to skip on and drop into jigotai, defensive posture, and that affects their techniques negatively. They're forced to use more muscular strength in their techniques, and they need to because they've adopted this position. So you need to get more upright. This is the fighting stance of Judo. We don't take elaborate uh, stances like they do in Karate. This is our fighting stance. Those of you who have practiced some of the Kata, like in Nagano Kata, you know that you come out, you go through a bowing procedure, and then you step forward, and then you begin. That stepping forward is stepping into the fighting stance. That's it. You are now ready to fight. This is the posture you are generally in when you are attacked. So it makes the most sense to work from this, this kind of a stance. When we have someone in a Shizentai, he's standing upright. It is easy to see right now he's facing the camera, and this is the front. There's, there's no ambiguity here, and this is easy to deal with. So if I want to make a front technique, I can step in front of him, and I can throw him to the front. But it becomes a little bit more complicated when he's standing with his right foot quite a bit forward and he still appears to be facing the camera and many people will think that that is his front. But to figure out which way is front, I need to draw a line between his legs and then look 90 degrees from that. And so this is actually his front. If I wanted to make serenage, I wouldn't want to stand here. This would be very difficult to throw. I would want to stand here because this is, this is where the front is. It's very important in all the techniques to keep track of where front is. Because as your opponent moves around, they're going to try to make it difficult for you to get to the front and the rear. They're going to be stronger side to side because they have a leg on each side. So you, they, they're strong this way, but they're weaker front to back. So they tend to stand in half front facing in order to protect their front and rear. But as a, 
as a good fighter, you need to be aware of where the front and back are and maintain your orientation always. Now, how do we use Shizentai and movement in, to, to create power? Well, we go through centered action. Many of you have heard the term hara. You'll be practicing fits like uh, uchikomi or something, and your partner will be picking you up too easily, and your instructor may yell, hara, hara, and slap their stomach. And they're telling you to center yourself and balance yourself so that when your opponent comes in for the technique, you're not so easily lifted from the ground. Hara is like belly. But this hara is a, is a much broader concept among the Japanese. If you ask an American child to, to draw uh, a, a, a portrait of a strong person, they'll generally draw somebody like Arnold Schwarzenegger, or their best attempt at that, with large shoulders and a small waist. You ask the Japanese child to do the same, especially the Japanese child of 100 years ago, they'll draw someone with smaller shoulders but with a larger trunk and thighs because to them this is the seat of power. And it is this use of hara, this use of the, the centered movement, which is the key uh, element that makes the Japanese martial arts look different from most others. It's this use of the centered movement. So we're going to move the hara. This is also sometimes referred to as the saikatanden, which is one point, which is the center within this hara. And so you hear people talk about the tanden, or saikatanden, saikatanden. It's the same idea. You want to have the centered movement. How do we apply that? If I have a grip with my opponent, whatever that grip may be, if I want to draw him forward, uh, I don't stand here and pull with my arms. This is a relatively weak way to do it because it breaks my own posture as I try to do it and my arms are only so strong. It's better yet to thrust my hips back, drive back from my center body first, and just hold on with my arms and make him follow me. So I shift my center and he's forced to come. So retreat. So pulling really means retreating. It doesn't mean to stand this way. It means to retreat. That's how I pull to the front. If I want to push him, likewise, I don't stand here and push with my arms to push him back. I don't know how many people even try this. But this isn't very strong and it again upsets my own balance. Better to hold my position with my arms to walk into him. So I sort of walk through it. So pulling means retreating and pushing means advancing. This is where we push and we pull. Well, those are only two basic kinds of actions, pushing and pulling. How do we generate power to the corners, for example? Well, certainly I can move to the corner, but I can also make use of body movement to rotate. Okay? And if I combine that rotation with stepping, this is tai sabaki. Tai sabaki, this is pivoting, and I'm keeping my body as a unit so that I can draw him by turning my body. So if I rotate, that's going to create pull, and I can step across as I do and make tai sabak to draw him off balance. So I can make a combination of rotating movements and walking, advancing, and retreating movements to affect my opponent to create off balance. There is a, a kata, this practice in Joshibu, the Joshi Goshinho, which is the Tai Sabaki set, which goes through these basic Tai Sabakis and how to keep the body centered and aligned through all of these front and back advancing and opening movements and so on. And that's the purpose of that. It's not some silly exercise, it's to make sure that you know how to center your body and use it as a unit in all these pushing and pushing, pushing and pulling actions. So we have to use these principles. She's in Tai no Ri, and this idea of orientation along with pushing and pulling by centered movement, Tanden, second Tanden, Hara, using the center to, to make the action, and rotating and making Tai Sabaki if I want to draw him off to the corner. This is how we can generate power without having a great deal of, of strength, strength in our arms and our legs. And this is critical to performing all of the techniques.